Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to The Woods. And what have I got for you lovely people today? Well, it's been quite a hectic week this week, so it's a fairly short video, but it's something you can all do. Nice and simple, nice and easy, and good for all abilities. So we're gonna have a go at this lovely little snowstorm. So come and join me, I'll put paint this step by step together. I'd better get back to that log cabin before that storm comes. Right, as today's painting is another one out of my imagination, sometimes I like to make a quick sketch so I have some idea in the direction I'm going. And even a little colour rough can help with your planning. Okay, so today's paper is some Bockingford rough. It's a loose sheet, 200 pound. It's fairly thick, so it won't need stretching, but any decent watercolour paper will do. And today's colours are cadmium yellow, burnt sienna, French ultramarine, which is a really granulating blue, which I want a lot of granulation today, a Payne's grey, and this one is by Renaissance, which is a very bluish version, and some Mars black, which really is a very granulating colour, and a little touch of white gouache. Three brushes from my range, three quarter inch flat, number 12 and number six round. Okay, so here's the sketch. No drawing template today, as it's all very simple. And I'm working in a fairly square format today, which will be a nice change. Off we go. Using my big Harke brush, I'm basically wetting most of the paper. And then with my flat brush, dropping in a little cadmium yellow. Next, with some French ultramarine, and I'm conscious of not wanting a green, so I'm using as few brush strokes as possible so it doesn't mix with the yellow. Next in with the Payne's Grey, and letting all the colours mix and blend on the paper. And I'm really trying to get a nice, dramatic, sweepy curve effect here, definitely inspired by uh, Turner's Snowstorm. Here I'm just adding a little warm tone with a mix of French ultramarine with burnt sienna. And all of this sky section is filmed in real time. And here is that lovely Mars black, which will granulate as it dries into a beautiful speckled texture, especially on rough paper. Next for the bank and the distant trees, and I'm letting them all mix wet in wet to get lots of atmospheric soft edges lost and found edges as they're often called. A little more work on the sky as it's all still very wet. But don't be tempted to fiddle with your sky if it's in that damp stage because you'll only get some uncomfortable backgrounds. Just taking out a little bit of colour here on the roof with a damp brush. And then just chucking in the same blues and greys into the bank here. Lots of wet and wet, let the paint work for you. It's all really very much a loose, semi-abstract feel. So just see what happens when you work in a very spontaneous way.
So the only little bit of detail here, I'm using the sharpened end of my brush to score in some lovely twiggy textures. No, not her. So the sky is still wet, so I'm sprinkling in fairly sparingly some table salt. So what I'm doing is just rubbing the salt between my finger and thumb to avoid any big clumps. So now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break and a glass of, believe it or not, snowstorm ale. It really does exist. So here you can see the amazing effects of the salt. Now in the wetter areas you get a much larger feathery texture, but in the drier areas it's smaller. Now it's definitely worth practicing this technique first, because you really are in the hands of the watercolour gods. Sometimes it works amazingly, sometimes it can be fairly disappointing. Next for the cabin, and I'm using my number 12 round brush and some Mars Black and a mixture of French Ultramarine with Burnt Sienna. Again, all done wet in wet. Payne's grey here for these fence posts. I keep them loose and not too neat. And they also work as a great device for leading your eye towards the cabin. Now, as I have some yellow here in the sky, it should also be reflected in the snow below. And do you know what they say about yellow snow? Right, okay. So, I'm re-wetting the paper and lightly adding in a touch of the cadmium yellow. So here I'm just bringing back a little lightness in the roof by painting in some clean water and then dabbing out with a tissue. And of course a little touch of yellow in the window and snow below just to remind you that someone is warm and snug inside. And a little touch of some subtle white gouache for the smoke, but a white pastel pencil will work just as well. Now finally for the snow, and I've mixed up a creamy mix of water and gouache. Or you could use acrylic, about a 50-50 mix. And then gently splatting in. Now perhaps practice on some scrap paper first. And here you can see you get some nice big and small splats, all varying, very much representing what snow does. There we go, all done and in just over an hour.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. This really is one that you can make your own. You know, try some different colors. You don't have to use exactly the same ones I've used. Perhaps some purples in there would be nice. But the most important thing is just have fun, relax and enjoy painting it. And of course, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, it is free. Leave a comment, I do read every single one, even though I'm afraid I can't reply to them all at the moment. So, have a great week everyone, and we'll see you all again for another Watercolour Wednesday. Cheers now. <laughs>